It's our honor to introduce Pastor Ike to this pulpit. Come on, Pastor Ike. Just obey God. Yeah, you can bring it down. Praise God. Give him a big spirit of faith home welcome tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Love you, Dad. Hallelujah. Glory to God. to be home. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. I tell you what, nothing like being home and talking to mom and dad and getting charged up, fired up. Amen. Amen. And we're so honored that we belong to this base. Amen. Amen. We're very grateful for the seed that's been put into us. We're grateful for your support and your prayers. Amen. Amen. God is doing amazing things. Amen. Amen. You know, it's, it doesn't seem like it's been that long, five years. I told the Lord, hey, we'll do it again the same way if you, if you told us to do it again. We're not afraid of circumstances, things. I, I'm telling you, you get to know God in a different way. I, I thought I knew God before, but I'm telling you, he is an amazing God. He's an awesome God. He'll never leave you, nor forsake you. He said he'll never relax his hold on you. I mean, I do like this, it's right there. I do like this, it's right there. I say, hey, you're everywhere. <laughs> Amen. So my wife and our children and the congregation, they send their love. Amen. She so loved me so much that she said, honey, go when it's cold. I'll come when it's warm. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. It's like, you know, I told her the other day, I said, boy, it's getting cold here. It's like in the negative. She says, yeah, it's getting cold here too. It's down to 82. I said, oh, come on. <laughs> she, she is a blessing. Amen. Praise God. Great things are happening. Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, God gave me the right one. Amen. I'm a blessed man. Amen. Praise God. Um, it pays to be connected right. Amen. I know we wouldn't be where we're going if we weren't planted in the house of God here. Amen. I remember. I still remember it like it's yesterday. The first time I saw pastor. And on that 33rd Avenue, and God, the Spirit of God said to me, that's your man of God, follow him. I never knew the man, never met him before, but my, the first time I saw him, God said to me, that's your man of God, follow him. And that is still as fresh today as it was back then. Amen. So we're, we're very grateful for it. Amen. Praise God. One thing that's clear to us in Nigeria, I hear that all the time. It doesn't matter that you started if you don't finish. <laughs> and that's what dad and mom will say to us all the time. So it's not about starting. It's about finishing right. And we are finishing. We're going to take it all the way. Amen. A time will come when we'll come up here with some pastors that are French speaking. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You see the varieties of where the word of God is going. The places the word is going. Amen. I'm telling you, God doesn't plan small. Amen. So it's an honor to be raised in this home. It's an honor to have mom and dad like I do have, like my wife has too. Amen. So we're very grateful. Amen. We're very, we know we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing if it wasn't for the seed they put inside of us. So you that are here, pay attention. Amen. You never know what's putting you until you're out there. And you need it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's good to be known by devils and demons, you know. <laughs> if they don't know you, you haven't started. You remember what they said to that son of Skipper? They said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> We're okay with being known by devils and demons. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, 
we've, we've got a lot of things we can share, but I'm sure you're interested in hearing what God has to say tonight. I am too. Amen. One thing about coming home to preach is like, I don't have to bring anything fancy. Amen. Everything I learned, everything I know, they, they, they taught me. So I don't have to impress anybody. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so I'm free. Glory to God. I went to preach for a pastor uh, a few months ago during, during the summer. They said to me, Reverend Knight, you're here. You're free in the kingdom. You're free here. I said, okay, I'm free. <laughs> I'm free here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, I was asking the Lord what he will have me minister to you tonight. And um, he said, just water some of the things that dad and mom has been talking about. So I'm just going to water it. Amen. So if it's something you've heard before, hey, hear it again. Faith doesn't come by heard. <laughs> Faith comes by hearing. That means if you stop hearing, faith stops coming. Amen. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 18. Father, we're so grateful. Thank you for this wonderful privilege to stand before this precious congregation. We stand in the fullness of your spirit, looking to you for every word that you've designed for this night and looking to respond to your spirit. And we thank you for utterance and boldness to say it exactly like you want it said. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 18. It says, But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as he hath pleased him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about keeping pace with the corporate plan of God. Yeah. Keeping pace. You remember Pastor was talking about it on Sunday. Keep, we got to keep pace. How do we keep pace? Maybe we can share a few things that God put on our heart to help all of us stay, stay, stay and keep pace with what God is doing. Amen. God take, took every one of us and he put us in the body as it pleased him. Okay. So I, how many of you know you're not here by accident? God set you here. Okay. So that means that whatever plan he has for where he set you, you are part of that plan. Because he set you there. It's not pastor's plan. It's the plan that God gave to the place where he set all of us. Amen. Each person, each member in that body has a role in that plan. Why? Because we are assigned to the same place. Amen. Remember in Ephesians chapter 4, in verses 15 and 16. Praise God. Somebody in here, each time there's somebody, each time you go to talk to them, your heart starts to beat fast. I'll take authority over that spirit to stop harassing you from this night going forward. Take your hands off of them in Jesus' name. Now walk free. Whoever that is. Amen. Walk free. You don't have to be intimidated ever again. Amen. Ephesians 4 verses 15 and 16. It says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supply it, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. It's basically saying we are all connected. Okay. We are all parts of connected to the head Jesus and he put us in a place and something is supposed to be coming from us to the other person in our connection and he said that's how we build each other up so if something is not coming out of us that means we're not connected right okay you remember you're not seated correctly and if you're not seated correctly it will affect your ability to keep pace Amen. One of the reasons people struggle with keeping pace is because they haven't taken ownership of where God has set them. You have to take ownership. That's your home. The place was carved out for you. That's your place. 
Because you see, when you come to a place, let's say you go to a business, an owner acts different from employees. Huh? The way they act, the way they respond to things is different. Until you become an owner in your thinking, with the place that God has set you, your response in that place will not be as God intended. Amen. Somebody say ownership. ownership. So if you take ownership of where God has set you, you would automatically begin to take ownership of the plan. So the plan is no longer the plan for the church. It's the plan that God gave me. The plan that God gave me. It becomes personal. You see, until your faith causes these things to become personal to you, you wouldn't bring out what God has put in you. You have to take ownership. Amen. Take ownership. That's how. That's the number one thing. Take ownership. God put me here. This is where I belong. Amen. Just like when God said, I brought them into your life, that's never going to change. I mean, that's the word of the Lord. So I took ownership of it. Same thing with where God has set you, take ownership. How do you know you've taken ownership when you go from, hey, the pastor said, to my pastor said. How do you know you've taken ownership when you stop saying, well, pastor said that this is what we're going to do. You, you switch it to God said to pastor. Why? Because God set me here. Remember, God set in the body. So uh, whoever he gives that voice, the voice of the pastor to that body, that's still God talking. That's one of the ways you know you've taken ownership. Okay? Why do you need to do that? Because it will affect how you hear. It will affect how you hear. You do what you do because of how you heard what you heard. Remember Jesus said, be careful how you hear. It matters how you hear. If you hear as an outsider, it will affect how you respond. But if you hear as an owner, I own this thing. I'm a shareholder in the house of God. I'm a shareholder of the plan of God. It, it affects how you hear. Now, when you're listening, you pay extra attention. Why? Because there's a responsibility on you. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. You see, the plan of God is for the local church, and God has set you in that body. So you must see the plan of God as your own. Can I say this one to you? And as something, you have to stand before Jesus one day and give an account amen. amen that's something that's very sobering do you know we're going to stand before Jesus and give an account of how we responded as a congregation to his plan <laughs> that's why we take this thing serious amen people spend their time living living life you know doing all kinds of stuff but they don't spend time thinking about where they're going after they're done here yeah. Yeah. amen yeah. glory to God yeah. see if many believers will realize how God sees these things huh yeah. we wouldn't be casual yeah. Yeah. about the way we respond to the plan of God Amen. We wouldn't be uh, uh, casual with our supply. We wouldn't be casual with what God put on our hearts to do. Amen. Amen. The thing about the local church, the thing about where God set you is that everything in your life is fed from that connection. Everything. Your finances, your children, your health, everything is fed from that connection. Remember, from whom the whole body fitly joined? The supply flows from there. Who set you there? God did. Okay, so those are one of the things to think about when you're thinking about where God set you. It, everything that flows from that place affects your life. Amen. 
Remember in Psalm 92. Let's go there quickly. Psalm 92. Look at verse 13. We'll start reading from verse 13. Glory to God. Amen. You know, I, I, I can talk about this because, you know, we've lived this and we're still living it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It still works. It's still working for me. Psalms 92, look at verse 13. It says, those that be planted, not parted, planted. Planted. That means they are not moving. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall what? Flourish. Woo! In the courts of God. Just in case you think it's limited to just the church. Let's keep reading. They shall still bring forth fruit in all age. Are you listening? So this is something that is continuously going. Okay? And they shall be fat and flourishing. <laughs> Before you get offended about fat, it's not that kind of fat. <laughs> It's talking about being solid. Spiritually, you know, you, you have vitality. Amen. They shall be fat and flourishing. Look at the next phrase. To show that the Lord is upright. God set you in the local church to show the world his faithfulness. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, he set you there so he can show the world. So you can be a billboard to show how faithful he is. Amen. That's the Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. That's just my introduction. <laughs> So let's look at some keys that will help us to keep pace with God. Okay? What are keys that will help us to keep pace with God? Number one is having constant fellowship with God. Amen. We talk about how we love Jesus. But, you know, some people say, yeah, I pray all the time. Okay? So God hears your voice all the time. But do you hear his? Do you hear his? It's not about you praying. It's about what is he saying. Because it doesn't matter that you prayed if you didn't hear. You see what I mean? So constant fellowship allows you to see what God sees. And if you see what God sees, it's easier to keep pace with him. Because you're seeing the same thing. And you're hearing the same thing. Remember Jesus said, I do what I hear my father uh, 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 do or, or say or I do what I see him do. Amen. And is, it is in fellowship that you, sh you share or you see what God is doing. Somebody said, what? How, how do I fellowship with God? You create time. You create time. You fellowship with him? I mean, you're walking on the street, doing whatever, you're talking to him. What's fellowship? Talking to God. Talking to God. You know, I talk to him just like I talk to my dad. Hey, hey, hello, Father, how are you? What are you wanting done today? What's on your heart today? And sometimes what I will do, I say, I remember that thing you said to pastor. You know, that's very, very fascinating to me, Father. What's my role in it? Hmm? That's you having conversation. That's fellowship. What's my role in it? I understand that he started to say it this way, but he, he brought it out this way. Uh, what do I need to see um, in that? That's fellowship. You ask, you have not because you ask not. You ask and it shall be given you. Those are the things that happen in fellowship. It's not okay to walk around not knowing. I used to. I used to say, well, Lord, I don't know about that yet. 
He said to me, son, stop saying that because that's not a mark of being spiritual. He said, if you don't know, find out. <laughs> I mean, you got to know on the inside. So find out. Where do you find out? In fellowship. Talking to God about your issues or problems, that's not fellowship. That's you coming for help. <laughs> you don't have good fellowship with people that come for help all the time. Fellowship is for people that come. They want to talk to you. They want to hear your vision. They want to hear what you got in your heart. That's fellowship. Amen. So you make the time to fellowship with God. One of the things that will happen to you when you start fellowshipping with God the right way is that you will begin to share the same priorities as he does. His priorities will become your priorities. Why? You're seeing things the way he sees it. You're hearing him talk it to you. So his priorities are now your priorities. Amen. And it's easy to walk with him. Remember Amos 3, 3, how shall two walk together except they be agreed? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That happens when you fellowship. From fellowship, you get his vision. You talk to him about your role and what you're hearing. Because it's the same God that is sharing that vision that you're talking to. And the next things that will happen in your life is connected to that vision you're hearing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then, <laughs> let me see. <laughs> when you share the same priorities, it moves you to pray. To people who don't share the same priorities as God, pray, praying is difficult for them. They see it as labor. But when you share the same priorities, you're excited. Let's get this done, Lord. Come on, baby. We're going to get this done. Why? You share the same priorities. It is as urgent in your heart as it is in his. So, so as a result, it moves you to pray. It moves you to start calling things that be not as though they were. It moves you to start demanding that what you saw and what you heard be seen. You begin to pull it. You begin to call it. Father, I call for this. Father, I call for this. Father, I call for this. Why? The priorities are right there before you. And in doing so, this is how amazing God is. In doing so, he has a way to reveal to you the things you will need to do to participate and the things you need for other places in your life. At the same time, he's an amazing God. I'm telling you, he is amazing like that. Because you have to constantly remind yourself you don't live by your might. It's not your job that sustains you. It's not what you do in the natural that sustains you. Amen. He is your keeper. He is your redemption. He redeemed you to supply you. Not so we can be without. I mean, if all we do is go to work, get paid, that's what the world does. But we're different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is what people that are different do. Amen. 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 Glory to God. So when you share the same priorities, it moves you to pray. And when you pray, you see. People who pray, you don't need to remind them. People who pray, you don't need to motivate them. Why? Because in prayer, they see things that they must have. See, the Lord will say to us often, he who prays more, sees more. <laughs> he who prays more, sees more. When you pray, you see. Prayer is your place of seeing. And when you see, 
it's hard to move you from what you you see you remember they say in the world that seeing is believing that's how it works get in there and when you see let God show you you are settled amen glory to God another key then to uh, keeping pace with the plan of God after all these ones we've said is learn to lay aside weights lay aside weight <laughs> lay aside weights somebody said what, what are weights this came up as I was studying they said weights include attitudes ah <laughs> attitudes there's a way in case you're thinking it's going to be a big old brick wall you know attached to you (laughs) having a wrong attitude can be a big way why because it will keep you from accessing what you should be accessing what's another way wrong personalities you know have you heard people say "Ah, that that's just not my personality (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know the Lord said to me when you got born again your personality is Christ because you are identical to him God didn't give Christ one life and give you a different life you are just as Christ therefore you have all his personalities Amen. We are identical. The same life that's in Christ is in us. So any other personality is a weight that must be put down. (laughs) Amen. How about bad habits? They're weights. Kick them out. Bad habits. They are weight. They'll keep you from keeping pace. (laughs) <laughs> let's, uh, we, we're going to have a good time. Are you ready? <laughs> Go with me. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12. Look at verse 1. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Instead of getting worried about the hearing, claim favor about that hearing. Claim favor about that hearing. Instead of getting all, I'm talking to somebody, okay? Claim favor instead of getting all uh, about the hearing. Amen? All right. Thank you, Lord. Let's move on. Hebrews 12, look at verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Uh, every weight. Every, not some. Every weight. Every weight. Say every. After every, what's left? Exactly. <laughs> lay aside every weight and the sin which, which doth so easily beset you, and let us run with patience perseverance doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over without quitting without changing people who have lots of weights on them get bored easily because each time they want to concentrate one of the weights is talking so you can hold them to one thing for so long huh there's one translation I think is amplified says you know uh, lay aside the weight that trips you up you know so I look at people I say just stop tripping man just quit tripping (laughs) quit tripping (laughs) amen you see weight will trip you the Bible says strip it off instead of tripping just strip it off of you amen Glory to God. Lay aside weight. Somebody said, I've been trying to lay aside weight. Notice that the Bible did not say try and lay aside. I found out, this is my personal experience, I found out that whenever the Bible says do something, I'm expected to do it. 
I know that's a revelation. <laughs> There's no ifs about it. Like, he's expecting me to actually do it. So when he said lay aside every weight, he's expecting me to lay aside every weight. If it's a sin, he's expecting me to lay it aside. So I'm, say, I'm struggling with the, this. I'm struggling with that. The Bible didn't say struggle with it. It said lay it aside. I tried. That's the problem. Stop trying. Just lay it aside. That's what he commands us to do. Well, you can do that, but I can't do it. Say, it's good. The same blood that saved me saved you. Amen. So we can do the word. Lay it aside. Lay it aside. Amen. Lay it aside. Why? Because if you don't lay those things aside, they will become avenues through which the enemy will distract you and keep you from keeping pace. So when it's time to go further, you're like, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, I'm coming. God's not going to, I'm coming, it's not faith. <laughs> I'm coming is really not faith. You know what faith is? Here I am. Here I am. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. Another thing that will help you, another key to keeping pace with God is whenever he tells you to make a change, make it promptly. Make it promptly. Make it promptly. Why? Because you are in faith at that time. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you hear, faith came. And it's easy to do things by faith than to wait. You see what I mean? So whenever the word comes to you, whenever instruction comes to you, whenever God says something to you, faith to do it just came. So act. So act. Amen. It would be, that's the easiest time to do it. That's the easiest time to do it. We still look back today and say, if we had waited a little, just a little bit, we would not be in Nigeria today. And look, the COVID came. People talk about COVID. I don't, I, I, I have David. <laughs> I have David. Covenant. Amen. <laughs> So if we had waited, my word, we wouldn't be there because there will always be excuse. So whenever God tells you to do something, whenever he tells you to make a change or whatever, do it right away because there's faith to do it right there. Remember, faith comes by hearing. At the hearing, every hearing is accompanied by faith. Every hearing is accompanied by faith. Amen. Amen. So when you don't respond, then you forfeit the privilege of acting by faith. And then it will become struggle. Amen. And if you don't make those changes, just like the other ones, they'll become avenues that the enemy will use to harass you. You know what harassment means sometimes to some people? Changes that they were supposed to make that they didn't make. And the harassments will come, and then the enemy will play the card of condemnation. Why? Keep you out of faith. Amen. So refuse it. Refuse to be distracted. Amen. Pay attention to those things. And it will help you. Amen. And it will help you. Glory to God. And it will help you. I said, and it will help you. <laughs> and it will help you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Another thing that will help you to keep pace with God is to believe the moment you hear. The moment you hear, believe. The moment you hear, believe. The moment you hear, believe. 
believe. Believe. You see, your believing is your agreeing. Remember we read Amos 3, 3 before you, or we quoted it, how shall two walk together except they be agreed. So whenever you hear God say, agree. Believe it. Whenever you hear the vision, I agree. I believe it. Instead of sitting there saying, how is the money going to come? My Lord, where does he think all this money going to come from? You know what that's telling us? You didn't believe. And because you didn't believe, it's hard to keep pace. I've learned with God, if he says it, just say yes. Yes. Can I give you an example of how to say yes? I think it was at the beginning of last year, the Lord said to us, I want you to hold meetings in major cities in Nigeria, starting with Lagos. So <laughs> we made plans to go to Lagos. And you know, the cost to go to Lagos for a meeting, one meeting, just one, just one trip, used to be half of what came into the church the whole year. Half, the whole year. And when he said, I want you to do that, I did not see a dime or nickel to do that. Even the ones with hole in it, none. <laughs> <laughs> none all I heard was I want you to do that and we started preparing we're learning we started preparing once he says believe it once he says I agree and get to marching he says I agree yeah. I agree and you're backing up no I agree you move toward <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Believe the moment you hear. That's how you keep pace. Believe the moment you hear. Agree the moment you hear. And if you agree, show yourself to be conformable. Amen. Remember Job 22, 21. Acquaint thyself with him. Show yourself to be agreeable. So many of us sometimes think we believe and we really don't. Because every believing produces action. There's no such thing as believing without action. Amen. Glory to God. So whenever you hear, whenever you hear, believe immediately. The moment you hear, believe. What about if it doesn't work? Is that your problem? No, that's not on your side. Your side is to hear and to act hear and believe remember we're talking about keeping pace he's the one doing it you're just keeping pace with him amen so you believe what you heard and you act on it act on it act on it to delay can get you out of the movement amen to delay can get you out of the movement amen praise God we got so many other ones. So let, let's just keep going. We might get to the one you like real, real good. <laughs> Another uh, um, key to keeping pace with God is to stay thrilled with the plan. If you're not thrilled, you're not keeping pace. You know what that tells me? If you're not thrilled, that means you're not in faith. And if you're not in faith, you're not keeping pace. If you're not in faith, you're not with in pace. <laughs> you're not keeping pace. You see what I mean? How do you know you're in faith? You have joy. Remember the Bible tells us the God of hope fill you with peace and joy in believing. When you believe, you're thrilled. I mean, you're thrilled. Praise God. You are so thrilled, nobody can talk you out of it. So how do you keep pace with what God is doing? Stay thrilled. Oh my God, I'm so thrilled about this. I'm so thrilled about this. I'm so thrilled about this. People who are thrilled see what people that are not thrilled don't see. The more thrilled you are, the more you see. And the more you recognize your role. Amen. So stay, stay thrilled. Get yourself so fired up about it. Somebody say, 
What? God said. God said. I said, God said. God said, this is what we're doing. So I'm so thrilled about it. Oh, my God. How do you know you're thrilled about something? You never stop talking about it. You never, I mean, you go home, you're talking about it to your husband. You go home, you're talking about it to your wife. You go home, you're talking about it to your children. You're spreading, I mean, it's contagious. You're spreading that vision. It gets into every single person. And guess what? You may wake up with a dream. God shows you something to do, how to do this and do that, and boom, before you know it, things are happening. Why? Because you're thrilled. Because you're thrilled. Let me say, I wish that would work for me like that. It doesn't come by wishing. You just act like it's so. You just act like it's so. Stay thrilled. Somebody say, well, Pastor, I'm really having difficulty staying thrilled. I've had so many things that happened in my life, and they weren't thrilling. I need special prayer. I called Miss Ann and I left her a message. <laughs> Stay thrilled. <laughs> Somebody say, oh, how do you change this? It's easy. How, you know how you change it? Stay full of the Spirit. Because when you're filled with the Spirit, it flushes all those things out. It makes you forget where you are. It causes you to forget that you are even going through things. Be filled with the Spirit. Be instead of going about what you're, you know, talking about what you're dealing with, get filled with the Spirit. Ain't not what people who go through something go do, they, except for they get filled with the evil spirits that just harass them. Don't you see it on the signs? We sell spirits here. <laughs> but that one that they sell there destroys them. But this one I'm talking about is inside of you. And when you're filled with him, he has a way of wiping away. It's like he pushed a button and it's like, this is, where am I? I don't feel that way anymore. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Wow. It's different. Why? You're filled with the Spirit. May I remind you that it is the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Resurrection power. It begins to zzz, 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 woo, hallelujah. <laughs> Before you know it, woo, hallelujah. That's how things change. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. How you, you see, I don't have to go through the lesson. You already know this. Amen. It's amazing. You already know this. So be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Praise God. How do you do it? Jude 1.20 tells us. Okay, so let's do this. Jude 1.20, it says, But ye, beloved, oh, this is Iowa. But ye, beloved, I'm used to, when I say beloved, the congregation say, yes. Because beloved means he's addressing you. But ye, but ye beloved. But ye beloved. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Tuned. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Amen. You have to remember, see, in verse 21, it says, keep yourself in the love of God. You have to remember that everything that God gave you, that, that God gave you was based on the love of God. Jesus coming was based on God's love. God giving us a plan for the local church was based on God's love. So when you pray in the spirit, filled with the spirit, you, you get yourself into faith and you keep yourself in the plan. You keep yourself in the plan. You keep pace with God. Because everything that God does is powered by his love. Love gave you a pastor. God gave you pastors. God gave you provision. Love gave you provision. Love healed you. Love redeemed you. So everything that God does, love, love is the foundation. God is love. So be filled with the spirit, right? Right? But you, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the spirit, keep yourself. In the love of God. Keep yourself in what God is doing. Keep yourself in what God is doing. Keep pace with God. See, that's how you keep from being offended. Ooh! That's how you keep from being offended. Stay filled. If you ever got offended, you know what you're saying. Hey, y'all, I'm not fool. I'm not fool. <laughs> really not fool that, that's what you're saying and it's not a mark of spirituality amen <laughs> so how do you fix it stay fool when you're fool you don't even recognize your flesh stay in field puts you in the platform where your dominion works Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So when you're full, your faith is stirred. And when your faith is stirred, <laughs> you will find yourself in joy. Huh? And you'll find yourself a good, you'll be a good person to hang around. <laughs> It, it will actually help you. My wife tells me that I've mastered this. So that's one good thing. You know, I can tune people out. <laughs> when you start talking about, yeah, 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 I, I, I can be there, but I can tune you out. I stop hearing. <laughs> I train myself over the years. I just tune you out. I don't have time for that. So they ask me, what did they say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? What? It wasn't that defiant. You know what I mean? When you're a fool, you become, it, puts, it makes you master. Master in what you hear. Master in what you say. I mean, it just keep, it keeps you in charge. I don't have to hear that. Uh, you know, they're just going on and on and on and on. What did it say? I didn't hear anything he said. Didn't hear it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. Another key to keeping pace with God is stay hungry. Amen. Stay hungry. Amen. Amen. Hunger maintains fullness. When you're hungry, <laughs> you eat. <laughs> Thank you, Mama T. Yeah, you, you eat. Hunger maintains fullness. You will never be filled with something you're not hungry for. Hunger will cause you to maintain fullness. Because you're hungry for what God is doing, you, you're moved to, oh God, Father, I'm so excited. Oh, all of a sudden, what, what are you doing? You're loading up. You're loading up. You're loading up. Amen. You're loading up. Remember the Bible said that they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. If you're not full, it means you're not hungry enough. Hmm? It means you're not hungry enough. Praise God. 
If you're not full, it means you're not hungry enough. How hungry are you? You know, I'm telling you, my kitchens are coming out amazing. I'm telling you, everywhere I go, I'm telling you, this is, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I get there, I'm like, yeah, I'm hungry for that. Bring it on. Yeah, I'm hungry for that. See, when you're hungry, doors open to you. So because I'm hungry, my kitchens appreciate my hunger. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We're, going, we're laughing, but there's truth to it. Amen. When you're, hunger, when you're hungry or when you express hunger towards what God is doing, the kitchen goes to overtime. I'm telling you, it's just the preps are coming out. Okay, do this, do this, do that, do that. Ideas come. Ideas come. Ideas come. Ideas come. Ideas come. You've been asking questions. Shall I, what shall I do with that business? What shall I do with that business? Well, it will, if it will take you from the plan of God, you better get rid of it. It's just that simple. I know that's not the answer you want, but that's what he said tell you. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. What's another key to staying, keeping in pace with God? Operating in dominion. If you don't walk in dominion, you won't be able to keep pace with God. If you don't walk in dominion, you won't keep pace with God. Do you realize, uh, let me put it to you this way. Theologians tell us that Egypt was a type of the world, right? And the promised land was a type of life in Christ. It's not heaven because in heaven there are no giants to fight. Okay, right? So the promised land was a type of of life in Christ. Do you realize that everything that God has prepared for you, you will always have Red Sea in front of it. You will always have giants around it. That's why you have dominion. When they're coming out of Egypt, they had to cross the Red Sea. And to go into the promised land, they had to just bulldoze through that's right. knowing that the giants are there yeah, that's, yeah. that's why you need dominion yeah. that's why he gave you dominion yeah. did you hear me that's why you have dominion yeah. so you have to walk in it yeah. so you wouldn't be okay with not having what God said to have Come on. Come on. how do you address it exercise your dominion you see all those visions that God gave pastors? You wouldn't be okay with not seeing all of them completed. Why? You extend your dominion. Extend. No! As far, as long as it has to do with me, I, I declare. It, it stops with me. It has to come to pass. You remember in 1 Corinthians, we don't have time to go through all. In 16.9, it says that uh, uh, an effectual door is open on to me. Yes. But there are what? Adversaries. Adversaries. Is it telling you that to go, oh my gosh, it's telling you to use your dominion. Use your dominion. You know, you hear visions like, like we heard on last Sunday. The devil is not going to sit down and go, oh, I guess they're going to get it. I guess, oh, they're going to get it. He's going to walk over time trying to distract you, but you got, you got his number. What is, num what is his number? Your dominion. Yeah. When you understand this, difficulties are not a threat to you anymore. Yeah. Why? You are walking in authority. Yeah. Amen? Amen? There are things that are to be possessed. Yeah. There are things to be retrieved. Yeah. But it requires you to operate in dominion. It requires you to operate in dominion. Amen. What's the number one thing you must know to, in order to walk in dominion? Know who you are. Yes. Yes. Come on. Come on. Yes. How 
I am a child of God. Redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. I said praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You will apply it. Some of you have some diagnosis that you can apply this to. I don't have any natural knowledge, but I'm giving you by the spirit. Apply that to. Apply that to. Take your stand. Take your stand. You don't have time to be distracted. You don't have time to be delayed. The plan is not going to sit there and wait for you to finally wake up. You might as well just wake up right now. And go for it. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. How about that side? <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! 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 Praise God! All right, be, be seated for a moment. Stop asking, how am I going to pay for it? How am I going to pay for it? How am I going to pay for it? Some, some people, I can hear that by the Spirit. How am I going to pay for it? How am I going to pay for it? Just follow these things that are said. Just follow. See, the paying for it is the easiest part. Why? Because you're not paying for it. <laughs> I'm telling you, I am so thrilled that God gave us opportunity to do what we're doing because you get to see God. That's why I want to fire you up. Amen. Amen. Get to see God on another level. Yes, sir. There are things possible yes. that you'll never know unless you operate in the word. Yes. You know, <laughs> this, is, this is one thing. You know, it, it's likely the same thing here. In Nigeria, so many things have gone up double electricity 100% more diesel 100% more uh, radio broadcast 100% over 100% more it was 100% more the manager felt so bad he wanted to come meet me to tell me to break the news to me because he didn't think it was right to do so so he called me to a meeting he said reverend I want to talk to you so I uh, Okay, what is he going to say? So he came. He said, I wanted to tell you personally that I couldn't convince the station to keep the rate at a certain place for you because you've been with us all this time. But they said they are raising the rate for everybody. And you know what that rate is? 100% more. So while we're talking, okay, so I said, okay, well, thank you for telling me. So I'm pondering like, okay maybe I should get I should go to another station I want people that will appreciate my money you know appreciate the money we're paying let's look for another station and I noticed there was no unction ah but I want to you know I want to just this is not right no unction and I did that for the third day you know I, I was thinking you know I have to make a decision in a few in a couple of days and I said to the Lord, what do we do? Somebody called me, or we, we were talking. They said, yeah, I heard you mentioning that the radio broadcast was going up uh, uh, more. Uh, what is the difference? What are they charging? I said, yeah, they want to do this. Within a few minutes, boom, the money came for it. I said, yeah, yes, sir, Lord, thank you. <laughs> Amen. And I've learned, he always tells me, when I try to do this, he will ask me, are you paying for it? Are you the one paying for it? I said, no, sir. No, sir. I'm at your command. 
So don't stop wondering how is it going to come. That's why I told you the story. How is it going to come? How, 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 how never takes you I. If you take the H out is, and put L, it's low. <laughs> the only difference from low and how is the H. And H stands for your head. Take your head out. <laughs> Woo! Take your head out. Take your head out. Take your head out. Are you listening? Take your head out. Amen. God's not gonna change he's unchangeable that's why you can be confident that's why you can be confident see our faith is not based on man's report our faith is not based on anything that a machine can dictate our faith is based on the word from God Word from God. Word from God. Can I give you another three? We were praying on a Monday. We heard that there's somebody that was kidnapped that lived very close, wealthy man, lived very close, but was kidnapped. But it happened to be close to us, their neighbor, and somebody told us in prayer. I was praying. We were about to pray. And the Lord said, Extend your authority. And plead mercy on their behalf. They are not even Christians. Not even Christians. And we did. Came out asking this. Oh yeah it's terrible. I said no we prayed for him. They will release him. Amen. By the next day we're driving in. They said guess what pastor, pastor, pastor. They released him. The authority we have. Take your eyes off of you. Take your eyes off of you. Take your eyes off of you. Anybody in this section dealing with indigestion? Indigestion. It, it comes up like acid reflux. Anybody here? That's you? Okay. Praise God. We're going to get rid of it. You weren't gone, right? <laughs> thank you father for your healing power praise God I thank you thank you for it thank you for it okay I see you haven't been sleeping well in the name of Jesus I command those nerves to settle back to where they belong now thank you for it father amen you notice just, just like that Amen. Praise God. So, what were we saying? Take your eyes off of you. 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 Off of you. Somebody in here is starting a business. Starting a business. Starting a business. A business you need funding I saw a big folder in your hand big folder in your hand but you need funding where are you starting a business where don't be shy because don't don't stop me after because yeah if that's you be bold this is this is a happy hour praise God God takes care of us hallelujah hallelujah Stand to your feet. Is that okay to minister to you? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm prompted to lay hands on you. Is that okay? Can you? Okay, come on. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise God. 
with God, I hear this sound. With God, everything is easy. With God, everything is easy. Forget all the lies that have been told in the past. With God, everything is easy. Okay? And the amount is not the issue. You know why he's able to talk to you about this? Because you're here. Praise God. Doors open to him in the name of Jesus as a sign to him in Jesus' name. Thank you for it. He'll do it as a sign to you, but don't forget him. Good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> You certainly don't get this at Walmart. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Where's Linda? Linda, come, come here. Come here. Come here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's, yeah. What I see, it seems like you come to a spot and it's like like, like this. It's not, it's not, it's, it's just like this. It's like suspended, so to speak. It's not supposed to be like that. I just looked up and I saw that. And God said, lay hands on you set that fire again you know he already said Jesus out out in Jesus name glory to God glory be to God thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord, thank you, Lord. Christian Case Jr come here Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You need to step up some things. It's getting dangerous going like, you know, your, your foot is not anchored. Dangerous. So you need to step up on some things and lay hold. Am I making sense? I don't have any natural knowledge about what I'm saying. This is what I'm just told to tell you. Okay? Yeah, it's not supposed to have gone that long. Just reset it this year. In the name of Jesus. Come out of it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. 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 Yeah. Amen. I don't know, it just keeps coming to me to tell you, Becky, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. That's the way it's just, it's, it's like a record, just go, fear not, fear not, fear not. So you can be like, okay, I'm not gonna, no, you have to be fiery about it. I will not, I will not, I will not. I don't know if it means anything to you, but that's what just played to tell you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Caleb, it's time for reset. 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 It's time to reset some things and put some things back in the front where they're supposed to. I have no natural idea of what I'm saying. But put some things back in the front where they're supposed to and you will see some things improve. Quickly. Quickly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Aha. 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 Yeah. Amen. If you walk in the daycare, stand to your feet. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. This is it, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <laughs> I hear in my spirit there are packages coming to those who have been there, who have been there, who have been there, especially those who may have been disappointed with some things that didn't happen in their life. That's not talking about, okay, but in their life. But because you keep showing up, there are packages sent by God to correct that. It pays to serve God. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. I say to you, in the name of Jesus, this night. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Okay. Before, before I let you go, somebody keeps having pain in the lower front of your stomach. Are you here? There's angels here tonight addressing stuff like that. Hallelujah. One, anybody at two? Yep, right there. They're here tonight. They, they came in a service where I was recently. I was about to lay hands on somebody. I was about to say, there are angels here. I haven't even opened my mouth to say, say a word. They're falling out already. <laughs> so they're here tonight. They say, they, they're correcting that. Lower pain, right there. Right there too. Yeah, praise God. Keep your hand lifted up so I know where you are. In the name of Jesus, be made whole. In the name of Jesus, 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 be made whole. Ah. Ah. Woo. I command you to take your hands off his mind. He will show up. Carolyn, he will show up suddenly. You've been praying. He'll show up suddenly. Expect it. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. <laughs> Let's give God another shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's so wonderful to know Jesus. And it's so wonderful to have mom and dad that can raise you up in the things of God. I'm one of the happiest kids on the blood. You know, it's just, you know, I, I've got good parents that put the word in me. That didn't look at my faces. That, you know, I got many faces, you know. 
They didn't look at any of them. <laughs> I remember, this will help some of you. I don't know why I'm sharing it, but I, I, it will help you. I remember we were in New Albany. Pastor Jay was preaching. And the Lord said to me afterwards, I've given you someone that will not save your face, but it will, it will save your heart. You know what I mean by that? I knew exactly what it meant. There's so many places where people will save your face, but you are roasting and roasting in difficulties. So don't look for people that will save your face. Because I know mom and dad will save your heart. Amen. I tell, you see, see, I'm not, I'm, uh, uh, I don't have a big head. I am very sound as to uh, where my connection is. And I tell it everywhere I go. My congregation knows who my mom and dad is. They know where I'm connected. So, because God, you can't be somebody on your own. That's how God works. So I take joy in knowing that God thought about me so deeply that he gave me parents like that. So I don't take it for granted. I don't take it lightly. I'm saying that to you. That's how it works. Don't take it lightly. Familiarity will kill your faith. Well, it's just pastors, you know. The mission is not just here. So don't get too familiar. Because that can keep you from keeping pace. Amen. We are set up good. Amen. We are set up good. Take advantage of your advantages. Amen. 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 Glory to God. I, I believe I'm at a stopping point. So, Dad, thank you, sir. Mom, thank you. It's an honor always to be here. And your fruit will remain. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Lift your hands and thank God. The healings, the, the spirit ministering to different ones, receive that. This is your time to just say, I receive. It is so. It is done. It is working. Just like was spoken to me. Ha, ha, ha. Amen. Amen. That's, that's your part. You got to do your part. Agree? Amen. Believe it. Agree with it. Say it. And it's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Did you get anything out of that? <laughs> if you didn't, check your pulse because you might. <laughs> Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. You may be seated. Glory be to God. <clears throat> So much in there. How many of you know there's so much? I mean, there's just somebody grabbed onto something. And, and, uh, that, that, you can get any, anybody can get something out of that service. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Ike. Thank you, Pastor Geraldine, for loaning him to us for a few, few, few days. He's going to go with me. I had it in my heart. Uh, what was during. Holy Ghost meetings, <clears throat> just standing there worshiping God, and I just saw a flash. I saw him with me. I'm going to Bible school next week, preaching Bible school, World Harvest, and I saw I had a flash back there in, in the Holy Ghost meetings. I saw myself there, but I saw him with me. So I called him, and I said, well, he was there. I said, uh, hey, uh, I'm not trying to say what to do, but just, just think about this or pray about this. Just stay just a couple more days because he's planning on flying back in a couple days and just come with me to Bible school. And so he prayed, and, and then uh, Miss Geraldine said it was God. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm saying. No, but uh, so I'm glad he's, he's accepted the invitation, and uh, he's going to be there. So whatever God's plan is going to all come to pass there too. But we were blessed tonight. Amen. Amen. Blessed tonight. We received tonight. We received our answer tonight. Hallelujah. <clears throat> We're getting it. 
We're getting it. Tell your neighbor we're getting it. Hallelujah. I, I wrote down a lot of things tonight, but one of the things I'm going to go home with is the easiest thing in the world is to pray, pay for it. You know why? Because you're not paying for it. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're getting it. Tell your neighbor, I'm getting it. Because I'm hearing, not, not just a hearer, I'm a doer of the word. Amen. You may be seated. Are you ready to receive or to give a big offering to Pastor Ike tonight? If you need an envelope, the ushers are there in the aisles. And uh, if you're making out checks the way we do it, just to make it easy for him, we have the checks written to the church, but not because we keep any. We just pass it through, and we, we have the people here to count, and it's much easier than him having to go home, go home and get all the four kids. How many is that? Okay, there's the next one. <laughs> No, we'll do it. We got all the th everything set up. So just write the checks to the church. We'll we'll give him at least what you give him. We always add to it. So don't don't think you, anything's going to be taken out of it because it's not. The church processes everything. I think may, maybe there's a few people that give uh, that don't give through the church, which is fine. But for them over there, the church processes. If, if people other churches send for their ministry, they oftentimes they don't have to, but oftentimes it's easier. They just send it to this to our church, and we pass it on through. We don't take a dime out of it. We give it all to them. Praise the Lord. I told you on Sunday morning, you give him a million dollars, we'll pass it on to him. And I told you I might sniff it on the way by, but you but but <laughs> ah, sweet smelling savor. That's what the word says. Amen. No, no, Pastor Jay, the Bible calls it filthy lucre. It also calls it a sweet smelling savor. It just depends what it's being used for. Amen. If being used for God can be used for the devil, we're using it for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, so are you ready to give tonight? Praise the Lord. Another thing we're getting is we're getting not to, we're getting to keep our head out of it. That's been a big issue with the body of Christ. And that slows you down. That keeps you from having, keeping pace with God. The devil, he'll, he'll always talk to your head. But, but, uh, but he's never talking faith. He's always talking rational, reasoning, figure it out. I was sitting there and I heard something. I, I trust you still love Pastor after this because I'm just passing on the message. And he showed me who it was. There's, there's one couple here. If you don't stop trying to figure it out with your head by the end of the year, you're going to be out of the plan of God. Oh, we love the Holy Ghost whenever he moves, don't we? <laughs> Woo! Thank God. Maybe if Pastor Ike gets up and repeats it, you'll like it. No, it's the same, same Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, he, you know why he says that? Just to keep us from getting out of the plan. Keep us getting out of pace. Amen. You know, if you start out in aviation, if you're in an airplane, you start out, and you're just off just a degree. You know, there's 360 degrees on the... If you start out just a degree, by the time you get to California, you'll be a couple hundred miles off. Wow. Well, that's why we got to get it on, get, get, get back on track. Rather than figuring it out with our head, just get back to what the Holy Ghost said. Just get back to what the Holy Ghost said. We got to do it right now or else we'll be way, as time passes, as time progresses, we'll be way off. But see, thank God he's good enough to, to correct us before we get way off. Because if you get way off, it's harder to get corrected. But these little corrections right now, it's easier right now. Just, just, amen. Hallelujah. You ready to give tonight? Amen. Father, thank you for every need met. And Ike Akabogu Ministries, the church there in Nigeria, everything they have in their heart, everything they need personally. Thank you, Father. You are their source. You are their supply. And there is no lack. Everything they need is already richly given to them. We agree with your plan to fund all that they have in their heart for Nigeria and Africa. Father, we bring our supply to it tonight. We sow our seed. We bring this offering, Father, to bless the world 
work you've called them to do there. And we thank you, Father God, that as the angels continue to work and as we continue to obey, we thank you, Father, they're going from glory to glory in this area of finances. Hallelujah. And not only so are they, but, Father, because we're funders of it, it's happening in our lives personally. We're taking ground. We're possessing more of what you've called us to do. Thank you for the harvest on every seed sown tonight, richly and abundantly, coming back into our lives. We take authority over it and command it to come back multiplied. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead, ushers. Receive the offering. Hallelujah. Um, another thing, this was, an un, this was an unusual one. While he was ministering, I don't know if you know anything about ministries that have like giftings, but when they get around one another, it sparks the gifting in the other one. That's why I like getting around certain people. Amen. Just sparks it. But I had an unusual word of knowledge while he was ministering, and it could be, I say it could be because the Lord didn't show, show me who it was. It might be you because he ministered to you about sleeping. But um, there's somebody that you've not been sleeping well, and the Lord go, told me why. It's a simple, it's not a, uh, he just said, tell him to get off gluten. Thank you. Well, thank him. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't know if that, I mean, if it bears witness with you. I, I've never heard that in my life. So I'm not repeating something I read on the internet or something like that. I'm just saying what I heard the Holy Ghost say. So whatever, whoever, that might be somebody else too, if it applies to you or whoever. But now, now, does that mean everybody gets off gluten? No, that doesn't mean everybody has to get off gluten. I mean, if it doesn't affect you, just eat, till, eat, eat it like you're a pig or something like that, you know. I shouldn't have said that. That wasn't, but that's country for just eat all you want. <laughs> See, you don't get in religious bondage. You don't try to do what somebody God tells somebody else to do. But if the Holy Ghost tells you to do something, you do it. And he might not tell you to do it forever, just maybe for a second. I don't know. Just, just you, you do some praying. Find out what God's saying to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah.